Genomic Best Linear Unbiased Prediction, or GBLUP, is a genomic selection method that uses the genetic relationships derived from molecular markers to estimate the genetic merit of an individual. In contrast, PBLUP analysis uses pedigree information to derive genetic relationships. A critical component of GBLUP analysis is the estimation of the G matrix or kinship matrix and the calculation of its inverse. The G matrix contains molecular-based estimates of the genomic relationship between pairs of individuals. GBLUP analysis within asrml 4 requires the G or G inverse matrix. We explain how to do this in another video, GBLUP using ASREML R4. There are many ways to compute a G matrix and its inverse from marker data. In this tutorial, we'll show you a couple of ways. If you want to learn more about computing G matrices and their inverses, this book, Genetic Data Analysis for Plant and Animal Breeding, is an excellent reference. Let's begin by looking at some genotypic data. You can find this data set in the library ASR Genomics. We need to install and load this library before we proceed. The saved data files will be stored in a folder I've already created, My Projects, so I'll set this location as my working directory. Genotypic data contains molecular marker information, often as SNPs. The data frame marker full contains genotypic data on 247 apple clones or genotypes for a total of 2,828 SNP markers. The apple clones were evaluated for several fruit quality traits at two New Zealand sites, Motueka and Hawke's Bay. However, in this tutorial, our focus is only on their genotypic data. The genotypic data has been pre-processed with all SNP markers coded as 0, 1 or 2. For example, the marker with possible alleles A and C is coded as 0 for CC, 1 for AC and 2 for AA. The numbers here represent the count of the A alleles. Other codings are also common, such as negative 1, 0 and 1. On further inspection of the genotypic data, you'll notice that there are no missing values. In this example, the missing marker data has already been imputed. There are many imputation procedures, but in most cases with less than 5% missing data, the missing values can be safely imputed with the mean marker value. Several different methods have been proposed to calculate the G matrix. In this tutorial, we'll use the method proposed by Van Raden. There are also plenty of software packages and libraries in R to help us obtain the G matrix. In this tutorial, we'll use the R library, ASR Genomics. This package presents a series of molecular and genetic routines with the aim of assisting in analytical pipelines before using ASREML R. The first step is to perform some quality control filtering on this molecular matrix with the aim of facilitating downstream analyses with ASREML R or another package. This function filters out markers with a minor allele frequency of less than 0.05. Since there are no missing values in this data set, no markers or individuals are removed. However, some markers were removed because of their low MAF value. After filtering, we have a new cleaned matrix with a total of 247 individuals and 2,776 markers. The function g.matrix obtains the g-matrix derived from additive genetic relationships. This function requires the genotypic data to be provided in matrix format and coded as 0, 1 and 2 without any decimal points. Now let's estimate the g-matrix save it in an object called g-hat and view the first eight rows and columns. This symmetric matrix is similar to a pedigree-based relationship matrix with values of around one on the diagonal and other values, mostly positive, on the off-diagonal that represent the molecular-based genomic relationship between pairs of individuals. For example, individuals 1 and 5 
have a genomic relationship of approximately 0.5, indicating, in this case, that they are full SIBs. GBLUP analysis in AS Remelar 4 can accept the G matrix or its inverse, both in full form, i.e. dense, or in its three-column form, often referred to as sparse. However, we recommend that you use the G inverse matrix in order to ensure the inverse has the correct algebraic properties. We'll discuss these properties more later on. In addition, we recommend that the G inverse matrix is supplied in its sparse three-column form. This is created from the lower triangular of the matrix. The first two columns contain the row and column indices, and the third column holds the lower triangular values, stacked row-wise. We'll show you how to save the G inverse matrix in its sparse three-column form at the end of this video. We can calculate the G inverse matrix using the solve function of R. Notice that the values are extremely large and very similar. This reflects the instability of the inverse of the G matrix, as identified by the extremely small determinant of the G matrix, G hat. Several procedures have been proposed to tune up the G matrix in order to make it more stable. We'll look at two of these procedures, blending and bending. Possibly the easiest method to tune up the G matrix is to blend it with another matrix. We do this using the following formula, where G is the original G matrix, G asterisk is the new blended G matrix, P is the proportion of the identity matrix or pedigree-based relationship matrix to consider, and A is the matrix to blend in. Ideally, the G matrix should be blended with a pedigree-based kinship matrix A. However, if the pedigree isn't available or it is very poor quality, then we recommend you use the identity matrix. As we don't have pedigree information, we'll blend the G matrix with the identity matrix. This is what we are doing with the following code, where we have set P to 0.02. Setting P to a low value means that we'll retain most of the original molecular-based G matrix, G hat, in the new blended matrix, G hat dot blend. This G hat dot blend matrix is a little different to our original G matrix, G hat, and although its determinant is still small, albeit larger than G hats, its inverse has more reasonable values. Another method to tune up the G matrix is to bend the matrix. This involves adjusting the original G matrix to obtain a near positive definite matrix by modifying its eigenvalues. To bend our G matrix G hat, we'll use the function g.tuneup from ASR Genomics, setting the option bend equals true. This will find the nearest positive definite matrix to G hat. This function has several options, but we are using the default values. Let's obtain the bended matrix and calculate the determinant and the inverse of g hat dot bend. It is important to note that we can use the determinant as a measure of the quality of a matrix that has been tuned up, but it is more appropriate to use the reciprocal conditional number, where a value higher than 1 times 10 to the minus 4 is often considered as very reasonable. The inverse of g hat dot bend has good values. The determinant is much larger than that of our original G matrix, G hat, and it presents a reasonable conditional number. Therefore, we can confidently proceed to use this matrix for the purpose of fitting our subsequent linear mixed models. Let's now compare our three variants of the G matrix. These three matrices are all slightly different, and we could use either the blend or bended variant. Let's proceed with the blended matrix. Recall that GBLUP analysis in ASRMLR4 can accept both the G matrix or its inverse, either in full form or in its sparse three column form. However, we recommend that you supply the G inverse matrix in its sparse three column form. Therefore, let's generate the three column sparse form of the inverse matrix, G hat dot blend. 
This is easily done using the function g.inverse that will generate the inverse matrix in sparse form with its corresponding attributes. This requires the option sparse equals true. Let's examine the sparse three-column form of GINV.blend. Notice that the data frame GINV.sparse has the same values as GINV.blend. However, they have been stored in a more compact form by taking advantage of the symmetry of the matrix. Finally, we are ready to store this matrix and use it in our future GBLAP analyses within ASRML R4. In this case, we'll save both the ghat.blend and its inverse and sparse form, ginv.sparse, to an rdata format with the extension rdata. The advantage of using this format is that the saved objects can be easily retrieved later in R with their corresponding attributes. This command creates the file gmat.rdata and stores it in my working directory. You can learn how to perform a GBLAP analysis in ASRAML R4 by watching our tutorial video GBLAP using ASRAML R4.